Hello. The chapel of St Nicholas and St Anne is tucked into the southwestern corner of the lower courtyard of Haddon Hall. It isn't a parish church now, but it once served the tiny parish of Nether Haddon, and it was built in the 12th century before the lower courtyard was fully enclosed. And we can see in this chapel many of the features that we've covered so far in this series. Just inside the entrance is the font. The shape is a wasted tub. It dates from that original 12th century building. The font cover is later, that's early 17th century. These stairs once led to the rood loft. That was removed at the Reformation and remnant of the rood screen does remain, it's been cut down. At the same time, the walls were whitewashed and the paintings beneath were rediscovered in the 19th century and fully uncovered in the 20th century. They date from 1427, when Haddon Hall belonged to Sir Richard Vernon. He'd been a soldier in France, High Sheriff of Staffordshire, later became Speaker of the House of Commons and served as a Justice in South Wales. There's lots of foliage and flowers and some heraldry and religious scenes, including St Christopher, and lots of scenes from the life and miracles of St Nicholas, as you would expect of the chapel's dedicatee. St Nicholas was the patron saint of sailors, amongst many other causes. He was also the patron of children, unmarried girls, pawnbrokers, apothecaries, there's a long list, plus his Santa Claus, of course. And among the miracles told is the story of three boys supposedly murdered in a brine tub and brought back to life by St Nicholas. There's also a rather macabre memento mori, which almost certainly dates from later than that main scheme. But dating to around the same time as the other wall paintings, the early 15th century, we do have this splendid alabaster reridos. It's not original to the chapel. It was bought in 1933 by the 9th Duke of Rutland. He was the man responsible for reviving Haddon Hall, which had been mothballed for over two centuries. And he had them set in wooden frames to make the reridos. From the design of the figures and the technique, these have been identified as having been carved in Nottingham. And the Trent Valley, where there were rich deposits, was famous for alabaster carving in the medieval period. Three main centres were Nottingham, Chelliston and Burton-on-Trent. The nine panels deal with the Passion and the Resurrection, the Stations of the Cross. It's not complete. Some scenes are missing. Jesus falling under the weight of the cross. Simon of Cyrene being made to carry the cross. Veronica wiping Christ's face. The encounter with the women of Jerusalem. Those scenes are missing. But the scenes we do have begin with the entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. Then we have the scene with the arrest of Jesus after his betrayal by Judas. St Peter has his hand on his sword, but Christ's hand is swept back restraining him and in blessing. That's followed by the mocking of Christ, his head covered and his hands tied. Then we have the scourging and the crucifixion and the laying of the body in the tomb. Who is that kneeling figure wiping Christ's hand with her hair? Probably Mary Magdalene. And then we have finally the harrowing, the triumphant descent into hell after the resurrection. It's a wonderful piece of medieval craftsmanship. It's craftsmanship elevated to art. Now also in the chapel, we have the post-Reformation three-decker pulpit. Pulpits were rare before the Reformation, as were pews in the nave. The minister would have delivered his sermon from the top deck. The bottom place was for the parish clerk, and in between was the reading desk. And also in the chapel is a memorial effigy to Robert, the eldest son of Henry, the eighth Duke of Rutland, and Lady Violet Manners. Robert died aged nine. It's a copy. 
The original is at Beaver Castle, but it was modelled and sculpted by Lady Violet. She'd had no formal artistic training. She's clearly very gifted and had exhibited at the Royal Academy, the Grosvenor Gallery and also abroad. Now, next time, on a different scale, but equally poignant memorials, known variously as Maiden's Crants, Maiden's Garlands and Virgin Crowns. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the like and subscribe buttons and click on the notification bell to be informed when the next video is available. Or you can subscribe by clicking on the rose window over my shoulder.